Hey, welcome back. And in this video, we're continuing our deep dive into WebAssembly. And today we're gonna to focus on how you unit test your WASM files using Jest. So before we jump into unit testing our WASM files, the first thing we need to do is create a WebAssembly module that we wanna unit test. Now, what we're gonna do in this example is we're just gonna very, very quickly hand code a square function. And that's the same square function that we've used in our previous videos. And if you wanna deep dive into how that works, then just click on the link on the top right hand corner and then you can get a full explanation on how that works. But very quickly, we'll just hand code it up and get it working, and then I'll show you how the unit testing works. Again, I'm gonna be super lazy. I'm just gonna make this work in a Node.js environment. Of course, because it's WebAssembly, it can work in Node.js, it can work in Dino, it can work in standalone, or it can work in browser. But for laziness sake, I'm just gonna very, very quickly create it in Node.js to show it working. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create my Node.js project. So let's just create a new folder for that. So we will call it um, square unit test, a really imaginative name there, as you can see there. And then we'll just see the into that. And there we go, we've got an empty folder. And now what I'll do is very quickly just create uh, my Node.js project. So I'll run npm in it. I'm just gonna hit return lots of times. And as you can see, that is now created. And what I will now do is just create a new file called uh, index.js. And that's gonna be our Node.js app, which we can execute to run our WebAssembly module. And the next thing that we're gonna need, of course, is a WebAssembly module. And in this case, because it's a math function, we will create a math WebAssembly module. And we're gonna code that in WebAssembly text format. Again, I cover all of the details of that in one of my other videos, but we will very, very quickly create it now. So I'll just go touch uh, math.wat, which stands for WebAssembly text format. And now what I'm gonna do is open up in VS Code so we can get coding on it. So we'll just type in code dot, and that will open up VS Code into the folder that we created. So as you can see there, I've got my index.js, I've got my math.wat, and I've got my package JSON. So in my math.wat, what I am gonna do is very quickly hand code this module. So in WebAssembly text format, you need to create module as the starting point, and that represents uh, a module in WebAssembly. Now, for JavaScript programmers, that's basically the equivalent of an ES6 module. It works in exactly the same way, and in fact, you can export functions from WebAssembly modules so that you can call them in JavaScript, and you can call uh, JavaScript from your WebAssembly modules as well. So it works very, very similar. Okay, so we've created that, and the first thing I need is a function. So that is represented in WebAssembly tech format as a func, and I need to give it a name. So in this case, it's gonna be called square. And because I'm gonna square a number, so just for anyone who's forgotten their math, right, squaring it is just multiplying a number by itself. So if I uh, try to uh, multiply 10 square 10, then 10 multiplied by 10 will come back with 100. So I need to pass in there for a parameter, which is param in uh, WebAssembly text format. And of course I need to give it a type because WebAssembly modules are a static language, whereas JavaScript is dynamic. WebAssembly is static. So I need to specify what the type is that I am working with. So in this case, it's gonna be a 32-bit integer. So that is represented as an I32. So I've got my parameter, and then of course I need to give a result as well. So I'm gonna call it result. Uh, and again, that's gonna be a 32-bit integer. So what I've got here is a function, func, which is part of a module, and that function is called square and it's got one parameter, which is a 32-bit integer, and it's gonna return a result. And if I wanted to uh, make it even simpler, I could just uh, give that parameter a name. So in this case, I will call the parameter uh, number. So nice and simple. So now I've got my func. What I now need to do is do the squaring operations. So again, I explain all of this in my other video, but, but let's be super quick about this. So what I need to do is get the number that I passed in from a parameter. So I do that using local, and there is a local.get, and then I will specify the name of the parameter that I wanna access. So in this case, it's the 
a number. Now, because WebAssembly is a stack machine, which again, I explain in one of my other videos on all about stack machines and how they work and how WebAssembly operates as a stack machine. But essentially, what's gonna happen is I am gonna take the number that I've passed in, so that's the local.get, and then it's gonna push it onto a stack. So my stack should have whatever number I passed in the first time. Now, of course, because I am squaring a number, I'm gonna do a multiplication, 10 multiplied by 10, so I need to multiply the number by itself. And because WebAssembly is a stack machine, what I need to do is have the two numbers I'm multiplying together on the stack, right? Because that's how the multiplication function is gonna work. It's gonna take two numbers off the stack. At the moment, I only have one number because I've pushed onto the stack the number that I pulled as a parameter. So to multiply it by itself, all I really need to do is do a local dot get again and get the number a second time, right? So now having done that, I'll have two items in the stack, which will be the number that I pass in twice. And then finally, to multiply these numbers together, then I'm gonna call the multiplication operation, which is i32.mul. And as I said, what that operation is gonna do, it's gonna pop two items off of the stack which in this case, it would be the number 10 twice or our parameter number that we passed in twice. So we'll pop that off twice and then it will multiply them together and then it's gonna push the result. So in this case, the result would be 100. It will push that back onto the stack. So I had two items on the stack. Now I have one item on the stack. And finally, what we need to do is return the result of our multiplication or the square from the function. And the way WebAssembly works is that whatever item you have on the stack, whatever's on the top of the stack, will be popped off and returned uh, when the function ends. So in this case, we have one item on the stack, which is the result, 100, and that would therefore be returned with that result parameter here. So now that we've got our square function, like a module in ES6, what we need to do is export that so it can be accessible to any calling programs, in our case, Node.js. So to do that, I just need to create an export, and then I need to give my function a name. So in this case, I'm gonna call it square, just like I did before. And then I need to say the function that I am gonna be exporting. So in this case, it's gonna be func square, and that is all we need to do. And we can just save that and we've got our square function. So the next thing I need to do is compile my WebAssembly text format into Wasm's bytecode format. And I do that with the WebAssembly binary toolkit and in particular, the wat to wasm tool. Now, again, I explained that in my Hello WebAssembly video, um, but I have the WebAssembly toolkit already installed on my machine, so I'm just gonna run that. Um, but if you wanna see how to install that, see my other video. So I just need to call wabbit uh, bin, and it's called wat to wasm and I need to put in the name of my WebAssembly text format file, which in this case is math.wat, and then I wanna output that, that's the minus O, as a math.wasm file. So if I hit return here, it will have now generated the math.wasm file in my folder, which is cool. Alrighty, so now that we've created our math.wasm file, what we wanna do is just quickly execute it in Node.js, make sure it works before we then create our unit test. So to do that, I'm just gonna do a import fs uh, from fs, and the reason I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna do a text file read of my uh, wasm file, so I will therefore do a const wasm equals fs dot read file sync, and the name of our file in this case was math.wasm. So all that's really doing is loading the wasm file that we created uh, uh, into memory essentially. And what I wanna do now is put that in a buffer. So we'll call const buffer equals new uh, uint8 array and we will pass in the wasm. So we now have that. And then what I need to do is essentially instantiate my WebAssembly module. So I will give my module a name, which in this case will be math, and then we will just await 
a WebAssembly call and we'll call WebAssembly.instantiate. We'll pass in my buffer and then we will uh, get access to the exported function. So res, res dot instance uh, dot exports. Nice. And then finally, all I really need to do is call my function. So if I go console.log and then I can go math dot whatever the name of the function I created. So in this case, it was square. Uh, and then I'll pass through a number uh, that I want to square. So in our case, it will be 10 because my tiny little brain can cope with that. I can do 10 times 10, any other number I'm going to struggle with. So we'll do that. And the final thing we need to do, just because I used the import statement, I just need to change my package JSON. So it says type is equal to modules, so it can recognize ES6 modules, and then we'll just save that. And now if I run node index.js, then it should come back with my square. So node index.js, and you see it returns 100, and then I can change any value that I want. So I could put that equal to five, and that should come back with 25, which it does. And now that we've got a working WebAssembly module that we can call from Node.js, we can create our unit tests around that. Now, in reality, you should be doing that the other way around, right? Test-driven development, you create your unit tests first, but I wanted to just really quickly get everybody up to speed on what our WebAssembly looks like, and then it will make more sense on how we integrate our testing framework. So we've done that now. So what we're gonna use is Jest as the testing framework. So to do that, we need to install Jest on our machine. So to do that, I'm just gonna type in npm install, and I'm gonna do a dash dash save, and I'm gonna do dev, right, dash dev as well, because I want that to be a dev dependency rather than a production dependency. And then I'm just gonna type in jest, and it will install jest on uh, my machine, and then add that to my package JSON. So that will take a couple of seconds to run. So now that Jest is installed, what we'll do is create our unit testing files. So I will just add this, and we'll call it math wasm.test.js. Um, so that's created. And essentially what I'm gonna do is recreate the code that I had in my other file, Node.js, but I'm gonna put that into my uh, chest file. Alrighty, so what we're gonna do quickly is just copy and paste what we uh, created in our Node.js index.js file, and then we're gonna rejig that a little bit to work uh, for the Jest framework. So all I really need to do is paste that in here. Because Jest uh, kind of struggles with the ES6 modules and the import statements, we need to use the old uh, common modules um, from ES5 and below. So, uh, so we'll just type in const fs equals require uh, uh, fs, and that will make that work. And of course, I think in a future version, imports will be supported in the Jest framework. And I think it's in beta just now. I just don't want to mess around with my machine there. So the next thing I need to do is just load up my WebAssembly module first before I can execute my test. So to do that in Jest, all I really need to do is call before all, and then it's gonna be an async function that we are creating. So I will just create my arrow function here, and we'll just do that. And then what I can do is uh, copy this lot uh, into here. So if we just do that a second, uh, tidy that up a little bit, and there we go. Now. Probably one of the differences is because I'm gonna execute my tests outside of this before all, I really don't wanna scope my math variable into, into the scope here. So I will just remove the const there. And then what I'm gonna do here is just do a let math at the top, make that global, and then I can access it from within the test. So I've done that now, and we'll just hit save. And then all I really need to do to test this is start uh, creating um, some function. So we will do test and we'll say we want the square of five because my tiny little brain can cope with squaring five. I think that should be equal to 25. Um, and then what we will now do is we'll create another arrow function here and we are going to expect um, the math.square 
uh, because that's the name of our function. And we would expect the square of five to be uh, 25. And the next thing I need to do is just update my package.json so that it uses jest as its test runner rather than be nothing. So if I save that, and now if I run npm run test, or test pass. And of course, if I go back in here, if I put that to 20, for example, we should see a failing test, which we do. So if now all I can do now is just create as many tests as I want. So my tiny brain can cope with 10. We would expect that to be 100. Um, we would also expect the square of one to be one. And I'd expect the square of 100 to be, uh, I have no idea, 10,000 maybe. Uh, just run that and then run my test and it all fails. Hey, it turns out the square of 100 isn't, isn't uh, 10, uh, well, it's not 1,000 anyway, it's 10,000. Alrighty, and um, we just, uh, we need to put this equal to 10, this should be one, uh, this should be 100, and then if we just run our tests, and they all pass. And there you go, that is how you unit test WebAssembly modules. You would essentially use Jest and unit test in exactly the same way as you would before uh, in a JavaScript framework, but instead of testing JavaScript, you're gonna be testing these WASA modules that you create. But the framework remains the same, um, all of the Jest functions remain the same, and you would do everything in exactly the same way. Anyway, I hope this has been useful, and we'll speak soon in our next video.